Good evening, everyone. And thank you, Mary Eileen. I don't know who she was introducing. The only word I recognized there about myself was fun. And I'll just remove my jacket in order to have a little bit more fun here. I'm humbled by this award. When I saw the list of other people who had won this award, I said, what am I doing on that list? Oh my God. And if you feel the same after my talk, feel free to tell the committee. I would totally understand. <laughs> I just got back from three days of When Faith Meets Pedagogy, just around the corner actually, and it was awesome. We were celebrating Catholic education. We were singing. We heard some amazing speakers, one of which was Mark McGowan. And I learned so much, probably the most important thing I learned. He said, if you're the keynote speaker after dinner, remember, the food goes directly to their eyelids. <laughs> I'll try to remember that tonight. I'd like to address my words tonight to the Catholic student leaders, the award winners. Congratulations. You were absolutely amazing. I was listening to all of that, and I'm going, wow, I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven here. I've had the best job. I just retired from Toronto Catholic School Board, and for 25 years, I coordinated Catholic student leadership. Nobody really knew what that was, but we had a lot of fun doing that. First of all, we know that no award is by one single person. So I'd ask the uh, award winners, the Catholic student leaders right now, if there is a parent or a guardian at your table, could you give them a high five or props right now? Just give them a high five props right now. <laughs> Second, if there is a teacher, a religious a mentor at your table that has had an influence on you, give them some props, exploding props, high five right now. And third, for the rest of the people at the table, if there is an award-winning Catholic leader at your table, give them props high five, or exploding props right now. When I think, when I think of a person who is a leader, I think of a person who has a positive influence on themselves and on others. And when I think of leadership, that's what leaders do. It's their actions, or their way of being that helps move people, individuals, groups towards goals. So what becomes really important when we talk about leader and leadership are the goals. I just gotta make sure you understand what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Could I ask everybody to put their hands that far apart? All right, be careful, don't knock over any wine. <laughs> when I cross my hands, and you can look at the monitor, you can look at me, whatever's gonna help you. When I cross my hands, right at that point of intersection, right there, that is the goal that you are going to clap on, right? So when I cross my hands at that point of intersection, you're going to clap. Let's just try it, okay? <laughs> oh. A lot of Catholic student leaders in this room. All right, here we go. You ready, ladies and gentlemen? Here we go. Pretty good, pretty good. It's all the time. You can't just clap once at the beginning because like Catholic le student leadership, Catholic leadership, we can't just put it on when we want. It's all the time. All right, ready? Here we go. No, when I cross my hands, okay? Ready? Here we go. I'm pretty sure I said the goal is when I cross my hands at that point of intersection, you're going to clap. Because ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of fake goals out there. You probably heard of fake news, there's a lot of fake goals out there. 
So we really have to concentrate on those goals that are important. Let's try that one more time. Okay, pretty good, but I noticed some of you were clapping a lot softer because you got burned. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Catholic leadership. If you're gonna go down, you gotta go down on fire, okay? So let's give it all we got. I always say that's a cheap way to get of applause, but that would be for the Catholic Award winners. Have you ever had the question, what is the difference between Catholic education and public education? I teach at York University the Catholic option, and I tell the, the uh, teacher candidates, I said, you're going to get that question when you go for an interview. I know that because Kevin Kobus, who's sitting right in front of me, he gave me that very same question when I went for my interview. And if anyone feels I shouldn't be the award winner, it's Kevin's fault because he hired me. <laughs> the short answer to what is the difference between Catholic education and public education is our goals are different. Our goals are different. Before I continue, I just want to remind you that in a rainbow, there are seven colors. Look what Michelangelo did with those seven colors. In music, there are seven notes. Look what Beethoven did with those seven notes. In Catholic education, there are seven goals known as the Catholic graduate expectations. Look tonight at those students around you. Look what the Catholic community was able to accomplish by striving for those seven goals. Here before us, these student leaders are the fruit of Catholic education. Here is the fruit of a partnership between home school, and church. You, the Catholic student leaders, you, the award winners, are the manifestation of a system who strives for those seven goals. I'm just going to ask my friend at the PowerPoint there if he wouldn't mind putting up pictures of the Catholic graduate uh, expectations. A couple stories behind that. In the beginning, in the beginning, when we were first trying to get the Catholic graduate expectations out there, it was a pretty rough ride. And I was asked to do some workshops on the goals of Catholic education. And I had a co-op student with me, Thomas Trafford. You might have known about his father, Larry, who did so much for Catholic education. And at the end of the workshop, I said to Thomas, Thomas, how was the workshop? And Thomas goes, eh, pretty good. Right? And I go, what do you mean pretty good? Thomas, like this is the most important thing in Catholic education. It's got to be better than just pretty good. He goes, well, can I be honest? And I said, Thomas, you have to be honest now. He goes, uh, I don't think anyone's going to read the document. And I said, what? They have to read the document. It, it defines us as an educational system. It's the goals that we want our students to strive for. What do you mean they're not going to read the document? And he goes, oh, sorry, Greg. And I said, no, t tell me more. And he goes, it needs pictures. And I said, what? And he goes, those goals, you, you can't have a document without pictures. No one's going to read it. And I said, Thomas, wait a minute. You're from Cardinal Carter, the School of the Arts. You're going to draw those pictures for me. <laughs> and he goes, sure, Greg. What do they look like? I said, I have no idea. What do they look like to a 16-year-old, right? You're the student. You tell me what those goals look like. So Thomas grabbed a friend who was in art class with him, Dana McGegney, and they created these paintings of the Catholic graduate expectations. Let's see. So the first one is a discerning believer. I said, awesome, Thomas. It's so important that our students know to be a believer is at the heart of Catholic education. What were you thinking when you painted this picture? He said, well, Greg, do you know how hard it is to be a believer? 
when you're 16? I said, Thomas, I know how hard it is to be a believer when you're my age. And he goes, well, we have to hold on to the halo. And I go, oh, I see that. He goes, yeah, because Greg, it can move so easily. I said, I know what you're talking about. And he says, you see the angel wings. I said, yeah, I see the angel wings. He says, we try to be good. We try to follow Jesus. But sometimes we take those wing angel wings off. So they're clip-ons. Notice they're clip-ons. <laughs> and Dana painted this one. I said, Dana, what were you thinking? And Dana is the complete opposite of Thomas, who was outgoing and loud and boisterous. She was shy and quiet. I said, Dana, what were you thinking? when you painted effective communicator, goal number two in Catholic education. I said, well, Greg, do you, do you see the ears? I go, Dana, how can I miss it? And she goes, uh, it's about listening. It's about listening, Greg. We need you to really listen to us. I said, Dana, I get it. And she says, do you see the mouth? I said, it's kind of like the, the ears, Dana. It's hard to miss it. And, it, and she said, the mouth is smiling. We need to hear the good news. Because when you're teenagers, 75% of the news we hear every day is bad news. We need to hear the good news. So Thomas painted this one, reflective, creative thinker. I said, Thomas, what were you thinking when you painted the reflective, creative thinker? He goes, Greg, I really didn't think. And I said, what do you mean? He says, I stole the image from Rodin. <laughs> I said, Thomas, for creative thinker, you stole an image? He goes, yeah, but Greg, everybody will get it. Everybody will get it. I said, all right, Thomas, we'll go with that one. We'll go with that one. And then this one was Dana, and again, quiet Dana. I said, Dana, it's a beautiful painting, but I don't get it. How does this tell me about being a self-directed, responsible, lifelong learner. And she said, oh, I'm sorry, Greg, if, if I didn't do it a good job. I said, no, you do. Just tell me what it, what it means. What were you thinking? She said, Greg, I tried to paint the image of a person, of the student standing on the edge of the world, on the edge of creation, in awe and in wonder of all there is to know. God has given to us. I said, what did you just say? I said, Dana, that is the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. She said, Greg, if you don't, we're keeping it, Dana, we're keeping it. The other day, I got a phone call from my grandson. I didn't tell you this at the beginning. We have seven children. If I tell you that at the beginning, you say, this guy's nuts, and you don't pay attention to the rest of the talk. They now have children, and we have 10 grandchildren. The youngest one was born three weeks ago. And Adam, who's five, is in senior kindergarten. He phones me, and he goes, Papa, I won the collaborative. Mom, what did I win? <laughs> contributor, contributor. I won the collaborative contributor award, Papa. I said, oh, that's awesome. He goes, yeah, at St. Mark's, they give one out every month, and I won collaborative contributor. I said, Adam, that is fantastic. Do you know what that means? And he goes, I asked my teacher what it meant. I said, what did she say? She said, I was a good team player. I said, Adam, that's amazing. And he says, Papa, does that mean I'm going to be a good hockey player? I said, yeah, that means you're going to be a good hockey player. Thomas painted this one. I said, Thomas, what were you thinking when you painted this goal of Catholic education? He said, Greg, who's going to be listening to your talk? I said, Thomas, I'm not sure if anybody listens, but what do you want me to tell them? He goes, tell them life is a dance, and it's a lot more fun when we dance with others. This is Dana again, and when you have seven children and 10 grandchildren, you get this one. This is the goal of a caring family member. And I said to Dana, what were you thinking? She said, Greg, I tried to paint the image of the adult figure, the father, the mother, looking into the eyes 
of the child. And if you see, I tried to do it in the shape of half of a heart. And if you look in the background, you'll see the words love and care. I hope it's okay. I said, Dana, that is so okay. And finally, they said, Greg, we're going to redo this one. I said, Thomas, why? What's wrong with this one? And he goes, we don't like it. And I said, why don't you like it? Tell me what you were thinking. He said, well, in one scale, we put the world. In the other scale, we put people. We put a person, a leader. And we were trying to get the idea that it's a balance between the needs of the person and the needs of the world. I said, Thomas, we're not changing that. I said, that is beautiful. And two weeks later, he came back, as only artists will do, and he said, Greg, we like that one now. I said, okay, how come you like it now? Was it the explanation? And he goes, no. He says, we never realized it. But the balance, the scale, it's actually in the shape of the cross. And there's a formula in art. You have to be a certain distance from the top, so we put a star there. It's actually the star of Bethlehem. We just realized it. I said, Thomas, for sure we're not changing that now. So there, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly what we're talking about tonight using gifts and talents to make the world a better place. And we heard that from our student leaders. So ladies and gentlemen, Catholic student leaders, congratulations on your award. These are the goals that guide us in Catholic education. And tonight, we celebrate you for the tremendous accomplishments that you have achieved around these goals. But Catholic education is a lifelong spiritual and academic quest. Please don't rest on your accomplishments. Certainly celebrate them tonight, but we can't afford to have you rest on your accomplishments. You must continue to grow in each of these goals. Our world needs you to be the best version of yourself. Let these goals of Catholic education continue to guide you in terms of your values, your attitudes, your actions, and let them be informed by reason and faith. Where your gifts and talents meet the needs of the community, those are your opportunities for Catholic leadership. As Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Be the best you can be. Do the best you can do to help build heaven on earth. And when you leave this place tonight, don't say, hey, look at me. I'm a Catholic award winner. Say, hey, I am here. How can I help? Thank you very much.